what is the role of Kabbalah right now, do you think, in yeah. the world? And how does that play into what we're talking about? And the fact that it's becoming so popular in so many different ways and with technology, anyone can Google Kabbalah and you have thousands of groups and books and what does that say, do you think, about where we are? Kabbalah in our days being spoken about mostly by people who don't know very much about it, right? no question. I've been like, privileged to have been with some real teachers. Like, I, Even if somebody would say that I was a Kabbalist, I'd say, I'm sorry, I, I've seen real ones. I learn it, but I've seen real ones. I could never call myself one. You have to be called from heaven to be a Mikubal. But the fact is, of course, as you say, the knowledge of Kabbalah is being made more available to people. Most of the emphasis on Kabbalah is pretty mundane, or pretty, I would say pretty, um, on the, I, meant, I meant pretty um, Hollywood and Broadway. <laughs> it's stuff that you can make your, better, your life better with. Almost as like it's like a, just a new age thing. Kabbalah for me is how to see the world in its larger context, what we know about the past that most of the people don't know about, prophetic stuff, the bigger picture. And then how to connect to that bigger picture like we've been talking about. That's what Kabbalah is. It's not cheap at all. It's wonderful. It's not magical. It's not playing with, with spirits or anything. It's playing with the very human condition and trying to amplify it up to its highest level, even within this, the state of affairs that we see now human beings who want good. Kabbalah is being made more available in the world and we hope that it could make a difference. We hope. And we, we're asking for time, basically. God, please give us some time to make a difference. To make Stop the world. those who want to destroy. Prevent them from destroying. Give us a chance to make a difference. I believe that if we need to, we'll transfer into another place in the physical world will go up and it'll be a sad ending to the experiment and we'll still be alive but it'd be so much nicer if we could go up the transformation could take place in a positive way I would run a film in front of every synagogue as people pray of, of the reality of this world it's a fallen world to make me aware of how important it is that we connect to the godly spirit to make the to make the changes that need to be made. We can't do it on our own, but together with God's help, we can make a difference. That's, that's, that's like what it's about for me. I, I don't live in some kind of an ivory tower of, a, you know, spiritual ivory tower where I, what's going on in the world doesn't make any difference to me. So what's wrong with us as human beings that we've allowed ourselves to, to be at this point? Excellent question. They take the, it's not a blame trip. It's not, oh, we we're so terrible. It's part of a plan. It's like an incredible movie maker, basically. That's how they present it. God is a, is a dramatist. He's a surprise. He loves surprises. He's willing to hide until the very last second in order that the surprise should be that good. <laughs> and he puts us in very difficult situations where everything seems to be over. That's just child's play. Let's rise up and see that we've all been put here to overcome all of this stupidity and to make something good. That we are souls and that we've been here before and that we've all come back this time to fix whatever we've done individually and also on top of that to participate in the collective tikkun, the collective rectification. It's, a, it's to be seen as an opportunity, not as, as, a, as a punishment, not as a Look how bad you are. Look what you've done. We are in a situation now where we're very limited. It's almost, it's almost like inevitable that it was going to happen like this. It's a setup. If we'll just wake up, if we'll understand that we've been fooled, that there's a force here that's fooled all of us. All of us are part of one great drama. And the enemy is not us. In Judaism, as a monotheistic system, it's not God against the devil, it's man against the devil and God above having created the drama and giving us the chance, like in, like in any martial arts, 
to disarm our opponent by taking back what he's taken from us and dissolving his energy. So we've been put in a very powerful situation with the wisdom of Kabbalah. We can understand it on a much deeper level than most people are and see and identify the real problems. I see us as a generation of souls. On the contrary, higher souls. We've come down and the, the condition was that we'd be unconscious as we came down. And we did it to serve God. And that at a certain point there'll be an awakening. It'll happen in stages and more and more people will awaken. And we'll mutiny against the force that tried to clamp down on us and suppress us. And we'll be free. And we'll come into the godly reality. <laughs>